So what is going on people, welcome to episode 5 of the Man City Save here on the FM23 Beta. I hope you are doing well. And well, a lot has happened since the last episode. We said we would get through a number of games. We are here today for the games against Chelsea in the Premier League and then Barcelona in the Champions League. Things have been going pretty well. Um, a couple of minor slip-ups, as you can see on the league table. We sit in second, a point off Man United. And well, it's close to Liverpool and Arsenal as well. Wolves up there as well. But today's opponents, Chelsea, have actually already sacked Graham Potter. John Terry is their caretaker manager for now. But they're not doing too badly. Or I say that, plenty of red dotted around. A 5-1 loss to Real Madrid as well. But yeah, they, um, they've already got rid of Potter, which I find quite um, soon, maybe. But nevertheless... So that, uh, yeah, that's happened. I've seen that happen before, actually, in other people's saves on this game as well. So that's what the Premier League table looks like at the moment. Quite tight at the bottom. Four teams on eight points, but a lot of teams doing well as well. If we have a look at the games that have been and gone then, since you were last with us in the Man United um, episode. So we kicked off our Champions League group with a 3-0 win over Marseille we then beat Fulham 5-0 we were 5-0 up by half time just took the, our foot off the gas a little bit Haaland with a hat trick and then we beat Barcelona 2-1 away from home two goals in three minutes Haaland scored an absolute beauty of a goal Lewandowski gave them a consolation late on which made it a little bit nervy but uh, yeah we managed to hold out at the new camp and then a 6-0 win Against Nottingham Forest, Odson Edward with a five-minute hat-trick. Grabbed four in the game. Haaland with two as well. And then had a little uh, friendly in the international break just to keep fitness up. And then we drew two all with Wolves. 2 nil up we were in this game and we ended up drawing it. The Raul Jimenez goal, really disappointing goal to concede. So, But Wolves are doing well this season. So aside actually that you know they, they're up there on merit. So maybe a tougher game than we had realised. And then a 2-1 win away at Salzburg. They made it tough for us, actually, despite us going ahead after two minutes. Alvarez got a goal. They got a consolation deep in added time. A 2-0 hard-fought win away at Everton, actually. They made this game tough for us, but Mares and Alvarez grabbing goals. We then beat Salzburg 3-1 in the reverse fixture. Haaland, Alvarez and Foden on the score sheet. Most recently in the Premier League. Actually, that's a lie. Um... 1-0 against West Ham. Haaland, the difference maker, in the 88th minute. They battled hard, West Ham. They made it really hard for us. But Haaland grabbed that all-important goal with a lovely through ball from Rodri and uh, broke West Ham hearts. And most recently, a 4 all against 19th place Southampton. They had two penalties as well, one coming in the 95th minute. I couldn't, you know, they were both... Both penalties, I couldn't really argue with it, but it was so disappointing considering we were 2 0 up and then 2 1 and then 3 1, 3 2, and then 4 2. And Walker scores, make it 4 2, just over 10 minutes to go. And you think, okay, we should be home and dry now. A couple of minutes later, they get a pen, and then, yeah, they were. I, I think the stats, if we have a look at the stats, I think we both had 22 shots, they had more on target, we had more, a lot more of the possession. But I genuinely think, despite the fact that they're in 19th place, they were the better team, Southampton. And we were kind of fortunate, to be honest, with the chances that both teams had and the way both teams played. Yeah, it's uh, it's not it wasn't ideal, but we got a point. Um, and luckily for us, United had a bit of a slip up. They are doing really rather well in the league. Recently lost to Brentford, which has done us a favour. You know, brought us back into it, especially us dropping a couple of points. But their record absolutely flawless since the opening day. Other than that Brentford game most recently, they smashed Palace 5-0. But they do play Wolves today, so it could be a tricky fixture for them. If we have a look at the Champions League group, we are already qualified after four games. Uh, six points clear of Barcelona. Four wins on the trot. Tottenham are already qualified. Madrid and Milan already qualified. Dortmund having a shocker there. Um, Liverpool have already won their group. Madrid have already qualified. Juve have already qualified. So the teams you're expecting to qualify are there, but there's still plenty of places up for grabs in some of the other groups. Buying third in their group. I didn't even notice that, to be honest. But if we have a look at the freak 
he's doing pretty well. He's not going to be available today. He's sent on holiday. This constant, you know, Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Wednesday. So, like, it's just finally caught up with us. Today we are playing a very rotated side against Chelsea. But his, his attributes are on the up and up, which is good to see. And even look at his goals. 14 goals in 16 games. Really not bad. Obviously, you'd like it, the goals to be higher than the amount of games played. But he's still absolutely uh, superb. He's playing the pressing forward support role. We are playing the 4-2-4 now. Um, he's playing the pressing forward support role. So maybe not getting forward as much as he might like. But he's still scoring a ton of goals. So uh, yeah, I think that pretty much catches you up to date on what is happening. Um, but this is the side we are going to go with for the Chelsea game. As you can see, lots of youth players on the bench. A lot of our players really tired. As you said, Haaland is on holiday. Um, but yeah, Rodri, Gaia, Foden, Stones, Walker, all struggling with fitness at the moment. So Chelsea, a game that with the turmoil that they're in, hopefully is a game that we are, despite playing a rotated side, and it's still a very good side, let's be serious. And we should be uh, we should be able to pick up a win. I was going to play a rotated side against Barcelona anyway, just because we've qualified. Um, but we'll see how the Chelsea game goes first. So, uh, yeah, we've got Edison in goal. Thankfully, he doesn't use up too much fitness. Although, I'd be happy to play Lunin in goal as well. He's played well whenever he's come in. Cancelo going to get a rare start for us at right back. Diaz and Laporte in the middle. I have been rotating Laporte and Stones when they've been fit. Diaz has been a constant. Um, but Stones has been playing really well. So he's played more often than not at Laporte. But Laporte is such a good player to compliment Diaz. Uh, Nathan Aki's coming in at left back for us. Hasn't seen too much football. But again with Gaia um, not fully fit. And Walker not fully fit. Meaning Cancelo can play on his favourite right side. Ake in on the left. De Bruyne is going to be our playmaker as per usual. Gundogan has come in to play that ball winning midfield role. Mares, he's been in and out of the side. He had a, did have a decent patch of form recently. So uh, he is effective in games. And uh, bringing him into the side, I'm, I'm more than happy with. Grealish has been uh, terrible for me. Absolutely terrible. 6.73 average rating in the league. He's got a goal and an assist. But... Yeah, you can see his last five games, average rating of 6.54. He's not been great for us whatsoever. Trying to, I'm giving him chances, trying to get the best out of him, but just cannot seem to get anything from him. And then Alvarez and Edouard up top. Alvarez did have a little run in the team recently, but has just dropped out, to be fair. You know, he picked up a couple of goals here and there, doing really well in the Champions League, actually. Um, but Odson Edouard has been the man that we've been more often than not partnering with uh, Haaland up top. Um, so yeah, it's just been he's been really he's been playing really well. Um, six goals in five games in the league for us. Uh, yeah, really good signing actually, and he's complimenting Haaland really well. Lunin, uh, Bernardo Silva is on the bench. He's not um, fully fit, but he's probably the best player that we've got that um, is of the not fully fit category um, that I wanted to put on the bench Calvin Phillips there as well, Cole Palmer Morgan Rogers there as well but lots of youngsters so hopefully we won't need to call on them too much but without any further ado let's get into the game and uh, yeah we are at home as well just looking at this um, not a bad side from Chelsea I'm just having a look in terms of what they've got on the bench some of the better players on the bench I've seen when um John Terry has taken charge of Chelsea in other people's saves. That he has tended to play um, a four-four-two, which obviously doesn't really suit that Chelsea side. It'd be interesting to see how or how they line up today. Um, if we uh, they go for the four-three-three, okay, so a little bit more what you would expect from Chelsea. But this is the first highlight of the game. We are. I have been playing 2D in the long gap bet uh, between episodes, just because it's what I favour. But we are back in 3D. I think we're in key highlights as well. We are indeed. So hopefully there's a chance coming our way early doors. Although it looks like it could be Chelsea. So Kukurea travelling a long way down the line. Pulisic inside goes for the long ranger. I think De Bruyne's the one trying to get a foot in, but it's gone well wide anyway. But yeah, it's going to be interesting to see... How uh, how Chelsea play? Kante, Gallagher, and Zakaria in the middle is not a f midfield three that really worries me. It must be said. 
Of course, Kante, we know how good a player he can be. Gallagher, I've seen good things from on this game so far. Zakaria doesn't seem to get played much. So, uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how he gets on. But Alvarez inside to Mares. Back to Gundogan. Tries the ball over the top. Alvarez can actually flick on. And Mares, it, well, it's found its way in. Jack Grealish, the man who's gone and scored the goal. A bit of confusion there at the back post. I thought this was offside from Alvarez. So I wasn't expecting much. I love the 2D replays. But Gundogan, I thought Alvarez was offside. He's knocked inside to Mares, who plays it across. And Grealish has bundled it over the line. We're giving him stick before the game that he hasn't really contributed this season. And well, he's grabbed the opening goal of this game. And it might be able to get better. De Bruyne ball in. Mares is there and he hits it. Onto the roof of the net. I think it might have been Diaz actually. But it looked like Mahrez. Nevertheless. We are one it up. And Wolves are beating Man United and Molyneux. Which means as it stands. We're going two points clear at the top of the table. I would happily take that. I'm just looking at other scores around. Everyone. Wolves have gone 2-0 up as well. Pedro Neto at the double. You love to see it. De Bruyne. Corner in. Aims for the near post. Mahrez goes for it. But it's headed away. Recovered by Alvarez as well. De Bruyne out on this left hand side. Back to Laporte. Good no one. Ruben Diaz got space out wide. Cancelo, can we get a good ball in? No, it goes back to Diaz. Back to Laporte. Chelsea just holding fire, holding rank. It's a lovely ball from De Bruyne. Tries to find the run of Grealish. As Piliqueta heads away. Gundogan winning the ball back well. That's what he's exactly there to do. Edouard Grealish is in the mood now as Jack Grealish. Back to De Bruyne. They're packing out the box, Chelsea. Can't seem to get much space. Ake, Grealish, Gundogan hit that. Oh, he's gone for the top corner and Mendy has had to put it behind. Really good passage of play. We held on to the ball well in and around the Chelsea half. It's going to be De Bruyne with the corner. Aim for that near post again. Aim for Diaz, but Sakaria heads away and Havertz only can relieve the pressure for so long. But there is the half-time whistle and it's been a dominant display from us in this first half. I'm going to say, boys, I'm not happy with the number of shots we're having. Keep going in Loftus-Cheek. He's on for Kante as a half time substitution. De Bruyne, Laporte is there. And well, two minutes after the restart, we double our lead. Americ Laporte grabbing a goal from the corner. De Bruyne, we've started sort of experimenting with uh, positions that De Bruyne could play. He is playing the Roman playmaker role today. He seems to have sort of settled into that role a bit more. But we have been playing him like as an advanced playmaker. Um, I even played him as a, I think I played him as a Mazala against Southampton actually, and I played Foden out on the left as an advanced playmaker. Um, it seems to be whatever role you play, Phil Foden in, he's just going to do really well. We have been playing him as a winger at some games as well. Grealish into the area goes for the byline as Pilaqueta well brings him down. I think it's going to be a penalty. He's got nowhere near the ball. It did look a bit theatrical from Grealish. But, uh, yeah, the ball certainly didn't move. And I think it is going to be a penalty. And it is going to be KDB to take it. He could do with a goal, to be honest, KDB. Really boost his confidence. But he has started to play well the season, as the seasons wore on. He sends the keeper the wrong way. And it is 3-0. And this rotated side is doing just fine against the Chelsea side. As we said, in complete turmoil. But a lovely composed pen from De Bruyne. Sends Mendy the wrong way, right in the corner. He would have had no chance anyway. And well, oh, United have got a goal back. Rashford grabs them a goal. And I think I'm happy to start making changes. Maybe bringing on some of these youngsters. Right, all our substitutions made and plenty of youth players on now. We were momentarily playing Calvin Phillips at the centre-back. I think we might still be actually playing Calvin Phillips at centre-back. Galvez here, another youngster, Cole Palmer, Morgan Rogers is on, Rico Lewis at right back. So, uh, yeah, we're giving these youngsters a good opportunity now, and uh, we're coming forward, actually. I was kind of hoping we wouldn't concede, but actually, that's a lovely ball from Cole Palmer, and Riyad Mahrez slides it into the bottom corner. It's 4-0. What a pass from Cole Palmer. Has he just earned himself a start against Barcelona, I wonder? I really, really, like, Rogers does really well under pressure, compose. This pass from Palmer, though, to see the run of Riyad Mahrez, absolutely superb. And Mahrez, as we said, happy enough to bring him into the side because he is effective in games. And, well, that was absolutely superb. And we are going to go on and win this game 4-0, it looks like. We are indeed an absolutely emphatic performance 
by Manchester City. Very good work indeed, boys. After that, did Man United lose in the end then? They did. They did lose 2-1. So we were two points clear at the top of the Premier League. Lovely old stuff. Right, I've got some thinking to do now, but we will be back for the game against Barcelona. So just like that, we are back for the Barcelona game then. And as I said, we are playing a rotated side for this one. We're going to go for a change of shape as well. Just, uh, you know, we were accommodating a bit, a few more midfielders than attacking players. So it just made sense to play the 4-2-3-1. So this is how we line up then. Lunin is going to be in goal. Cancelo on the right. Akanji just back from injury. Could do about 75 minutes. We'll see how it goes. But Akanji and Laporte at the back. Nathan Ake at left back. Phillips and Gundogan in the middle of midfield. Phillips going to operate in that ball winner role. Gundogan is going to be a box-to-box. -box. Grealish is going to be out on that right-hand side. Alvarez out on the left. Gund uh, not Gundogan. De Bruyne in the number 10 role as the advanced playmaker. And Edouard is going to be up top. Uh, Haaland still on holiday for this one. Hopefully we won't miss him too much. But we didn't in the last game. And uh, yeah, lots of players back to fitness. Um, yeah, just a wealth of talent. Obviously, we've got... Re Couple of youngsters on there, Rico Lewis and uh, Kim Brecken and Aboa Aboav Wuduo. Hopefully he doesn't come on. But anyway, as we said, we are qualified for the Champions League group, so hopefully these players can get a bit of fitness in, get a bit of a run out if we have a look at this Barca team. It's decent, you know, not too bad, but we've managed to navigate them fairly easily in the uh, first fixture between us two. Um, it's a big challenge to play Barcelona because they're sixth in La Liga, and the uh, the Champions music is Champions League music is playing. Just give you a little sample of it there, but obviously we don't want to get any copyright strikes. I've noticed actually, um, if you skip this bit, this is quite nice to watch anyway. Collecting that that is probably one of the best animations in the whole game, to be honest. The referee picking up the ball, but I've noticed if you skip this and just go to the start of the game that the music keeps on playing despite, and it will just finish like it will carry on playing and it won't finish until it's done even if you have started the game which is quite funny but anyway we are underway of course the Champions League graphics looking fine in all their glory looking at well I was going to say let's look at some other scores but we have a highlight 12 minutes into the game Akanji out wide to Cancelo needs some support on this right hand side plays a ball down the line for Grealish but it wasn't really there. Memphis does well tracking back. And now it's Araujo out to Depay. Barca looking to get forward quickly. But Kanji cuts out. And Phillips comes forward. Good ball forward to Julian Alvarez. Tries to find De Bruyne inside. But the pass easily cut out by Busquets. To Stegen lumps forward. Hopefully we can get to this. Cancelo. Phillips does really well to get ahead of Lewandowski. And Albert on the back foot makes the mistake. Oh, it's a great save. But... To Stegen parries it straight back to the feet of Odson Edward. It couldn't finish at the first time of asking, but he certainly wasn't going to miss that second opportunity. He's enjoying playing Champions League football, the former Palace man. And well, I wasn't sure where this highlight was going to go, but a bit of a rogue touch by Jordi Albert. It's a great initial save from to Stegen. A bit of a poor finish from Edward first time round. You think anywhere other than straight at the keeper, and it's a goal. But fortunately for him, it comes straight back to him and he can finish it off. And uh, yeah, I'm really enjoying actually on Sun Edward. You'll have to let me know in the comments sort of what you thought of the signing when I initially made it. Um, you know, just like, what are you doing sort of thing? Or, oh yeah, this will work because he's good in FM sort of thing. So yeah, I'm curious, but I'm really enjoying him actually. And um, the fact that Alvarez has sort of stepped up recently as well is making me sort of really have to think and pick between who... I want to play, but Edouard has got the lion's share of the, the game so far, but uh, Barcelona trying to build out from the back as after a, a through ball went a bit awry, but Phillips does really well, but Alba intercepts, can maybe launch a counter, or maybe go on his own, Rafinha on this right-hand side, Kunde playing out a right-back, gets a ball in, and Lewandowski unmarked in the centre, tucks it away, he scored against us in the uh, reverse fixture of this one, and he's found the back of the net as those Barcelona fans going mad behind the goal. But you cannot leave a man like Robert Lewandowski unmarked in the area. And we just pick up his run. Akanji just doesn't keep track of him, doesn't stay goal side. 
And well, not really a lot can Lunin can do from about eight yards out. It is 1-1. One, one. Although, can we nick a goal before our time? De Bruyne floats in only as far as Araujo. Phillips does really well. He's played really well this game, Phillips. Made some crucial interceptions. Gundogan tries to float it forward. Alvarez knocks on. Bit of head tennis going on. But Rafinha can knock it down. Kunde back to to Stegen. Tell the boys to fire up a bit. No, hopefully we don't concede before half time as we enter added time at the end of the first half. But somehow we've let that drop to Rafinha. He needs to get the better. He's a big switch of play, and Julio Alvarez got plenty of space on this left hand side. Ball forwards of Depay. He's put it in the corner. I feel like it's going to be offside, though. The only question could be maybe whether Ake was playing him onside. For me, he looked offside. It's gone to VAR. It has been disallowed. He was offside, but falling asleep there. Our defence really is not ideal, and it's one or what hard time. And actually, Barcelona have uh, had dominated this game statistically. You wouldn't think it in terms of chances. They go to the dressing room, and I'm going to say that actually it's not good enough. And what I think I might do, I've done this a couple of times, but I might just drop these guys back. Um, what do you want to be when you grow up? You want to be a playmaker, which isn't ideal. Um, so drop those guys back, maybe just for a bit more protection. I'm going to play Gundogan as a register. I'm actually going to get a Kanji just to closely mark Robert Lewandowski, just so something like that doesn't happen again. And well, I am actually going to demand some more from the boys. De Bruyne towards a back stick. Akanji is there and he heads just over the bar. Not seen a lot of football this season, Akanji. Of course, we've got the superiority of the likes of Diaz and Stones and Laporte. But he's been injured quite a lot as well, Akanji. They're going to make a sub hit. Alvarez not had the best of games. Well, a couple more changes. Mares and Foden have come on. We've pushed Gaia back to left back. Grealish gone this left hand side, and there is Jack Grealish, and it's an immediate impact from Mares and from Grealish. The switch of uh, switch Grealish from right to left, and well, he's bagged himself a couple of goals in these games after doing absolutely naff all all season. But Mares involved straight away as he comes on. It's a lovely fizz ball across. Grealish gets there just ahead of I think is it Kunde? It is indeed. Pokes it into the bottom corner. Lewandowski has come off, so we'll. Uh, We'll take Akanji's thing off of him. His little personal man mark. Is there any more subs we can make defensively? We look a little bit tired. So if we have a... Oh, who's that? Grealish. Is, looks like he's suffering. But um, yeah, I think maybe we'll bring off... We'll bring on Stones for Akanji. Bring on Carl Walker as well. How do those two want to play? We'll play them. As uh, the centre back and the ball playing defender, lovely old stuff. But hopefully now we can hold out. That dropping those two back seems to have done the trick. We are going to make him just sit deeper. But Phillips with the corner in towards the far post it is to Stegen that collects. And we have conceded some late goals recently. Southampton being the prime example of that. But hopefully nothing stupid here. We can hold on to our lead. Stones. Out to Walker, plays it down the line, looking for Mares, but Alonso cuts out back to Testegan. Araujo. Oh, he's giving it away. Phil Foden, could he surely put the icing on the cake? He fires it wide. It's going to be five minutes of added time in this one. Can we hold on? They've not offered a lot really in this second half. And there we go. We do hold on. Two, two one wins against Barcelona in the group stage. A fairly even game, it must be said. But I'm going to say, nice work everyone. A much better second half. Absolutely, always nice to have to win. Um, these things happen in football. Pretty big deflection. I'll take it. It didn't seem like a much of a deflection. But uh, we'll certainly take it. But we've got Marseille in the uh, last group game. And uh, yeah, we uh, five wins out of five so far in the Champions League. Is there anyone else? Benfica have now qualified. Milan and Madrid, Leipzig and Ajax into PSG. Porto and Juventus. So uh, the knockout stage is starting to shape up. Be interesting to see who we get a team like Ajax. Would be absolutely lovely. But uh, we'll have to wait and see. In terms of when we will next be back then. 
Um, I'm not too sure. We'll probably get past the World Cup. I think it maybe will come around sort of middle of January. Maybe if we get a tasty FA Cup tie or, um, you know, like an interesting team, then we'll do that. But I think sort of somewhere in January, again, get plenty of games under our belts um, and then we'll see where we stand. But, guys, that is going to be the end of this episode. And, well, you know, we're going with two points clear at the top of the league. We're absolutely flying in our Champions League group. Haaland is... Uh, Needs to score a few more goals, but it's coming back to fitness. And if you have a look at the run of games that we've got, Brighton, Leeds, Palace, Villa. Spurs will be a tricky one, as will Newcastle, but these are all games. Hopefully, the Norwegian can uh, get plenty of goals in. But like I said, guys, that is going to be it for today's episode. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, pop a like on there for me, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next one.